When 12V is input, it splits into two branches. First, let's look at the first branch. The 12V reaches here, where it encounters a resistor and a Zener diode. This Zener diode operates at 13V. Obviously, this 12V doesn't meet the Zener diode's operating requirements, so it won't function or break down. So the 12V remains there at this point. The base of the transistor is now 12V. Then, let's look at the second branch. The 12V flows directly to the emitter of the transistor. When both the emitter and base are at 12V, the transistor won't operate and won't conduct. Then, the 12V flows here, through the 10V Zener diode, pulling the voltage across the Zener diode to 10V. The remaining 2V is enough to turn on the MOSFET. At this point, the 12V flows directly through the MOSFET and into the load, providing 12V power to the load. When 14 volts are input, there are also two branches. First, it hits the 13 volt voltage regulator through the resistor, and the voltage at both ends is pulled to 13 volts. Through this resistor, the base of the transistor is 13 volts. Then look at the second branch. 14 volts pass through it directly to the emitter. At this time, the emitter is 14 volts, so the transistor will definitely be turned on. This 14 volt is directly sent here. This side is also 14 volts. The S and G poles of the MOSFET are both 14 volts. The MOSFET is not turned on, thereby controlling the excessive voltage from affecting the subsequent load. This is one of its working principles. So what are the functions of the two resistors R1 and R2 in the figure? Friends who know can leave a message.